The laptop that you've just seen is the MSI GE738RF. It is the newest generation model of this, the MSI GE73, and it's one that I've looked at in a multiple iterations in the past. So feel free to take a look at the previous versions if you want to see the kind of changed history that this model has had. But either way, this one is a just shy of £2,000 configuration, making it a fairly premium model, considering that the GE lineup is meant to be anyway one of MSI's slightly more budget oriented brand so let's take a look at it. Now in terms of specs this thing is incredibly interesting you have the new 8750H CPU from Intel which is a 6 core 12 threaded chip it runs at 2.9 gigahertz base although I've seen it personally boost to 4 gigahertz which is actually pretty impressive for a mobile CPU although temperature wise it is toastingly hot it got up to 98 or 99 degrees Celsius so this is not a cool machine. In terms of graphics we have a GTX 1070 now this one isn't a max Q1, it is a, in theory anyway, full fat kind of GTX 1080 which is great to see and in terms of performance it does a great job. The rest of the spec is fairly simple, you have 16 gigs of DDR4 RAM, a 500 gig worth of NVMe SSDs, I believe it's two 250 gigs in RAID 0 which is nice, although bear in mind there is no redundancy there so just you know be careful and you also have a one terabyte hard drive. So now you know the specs, let's take a look at the performance. So starting with 3D Mark Fire Strike, we have a very respectable score of 16,114. This is in part thanks to the great 6 core CPU, so make sure to check out the Fire Strike website to compare them. In terms of gaming results, we have Dirt Rally at, on ultra settings at 98 FPS average, which is definitely great to see with 49 minimum and 122 maximum. In terms of GTA 5 on very high settings, we're looking at 117 FPS average, which is great to see for that 120 hertz display with 65 minimum and 152 maximum. Maximum. In terms of Uninja Heaven, we actually have the exact same number, although a minimum of 9, but bear in mind this is a synthetic benchmark, and maximum of 127. So overall, pretty decent. The minimum is a bit low, but it's a thing with Uninja Heaven, so don't worry. In terms of PUBG, especially tested on Sandhawk, we have 86 FPS with everything maxed, 49 FPS minimum, and 105 maximum, which is actually very nice to see. And in terms of Fortnite, we have 116 FPS average with 85 minimum and 120. Maximum, so pretty consistent, pretty reliable, and an overall great gaming experience, especially on that 120 hertz display. So now that you know that the games run at some pretty high frame rates, it'd be nice to have a I don't know, a high refresh rate display to go along with that, I think. And happily, this one has that in, uh, you know, just fine. It's a 17.3 inch model, so obviously it's a 17 inch display. It's a 1080p model with a three millisecond greater response time and a 120 hertz refresh rate. Now, as far as I can see, this one doesn't support G-Sync. It seems to be something that NVIDIA is offering as a kind of paid or a more premium upgrade option, if you like. But uh, from what I can see, even though this in theory should be perfectly capable of it it's not so just bear that one in mind but it is still a very smooth gaming experience obviously that nice high refresh rate especially built into the laptop is always great to see and with the GTX 1070 powering games as well as it does you're gonna have a pretty nice experience now the display is not perfect the viewing angles especially top and bottom are pretty nasty but of course it is a laptop so it's on a hinge and you can uh, sort of tilt it to your heart's content the side to side viewing angles are actually pretty decent so so the sort of sitting on your bed with your laptop watching movies with your partner or whatever experience is going to be just fine. Now just below that display is the keyboard and trackpad. The keyboard itself is still a sort of design by SteelSeries 1, has plenty of RGB options. It is actually a, a pretty aesthetically pleasing keyboard to look at and to type on it's not too bad either. As a British person I'm still slightly annoyed that they don't offer a full ISO UK layout keyboard but at the same time it's still very nice to type on. It doesn't have the faux mechanical uh, kind of tactileness to it which actually makes it pretty nice to type on still slightly on the mushy side but overall typing and gaming experience with it was pretty great the trackpad is all right it still has your usual kind of gestures and two fingers to scroll and stuff like that as well as physical hardware buttons at the bottom I would mention though that palm rejection really wasn't great on this and I found that while playing games including as you can probably see playing on battlegrounds I would find that just having my hand on WSD my 
my sort of thumb, if you like, or the lower part of my thumb would be slightly touching the touchpad and causing me to either fire or uh, have my mouse or aim completely jump around like a madman. So it was a bit of a pain and I found that I couldn't turn the trackpad off with the uh, kind of hotkey, which is a bit of an annoyance. So the overall user experience for the laptop is pretty great. Now, before we jump into anything else, I do want to take a look at the IO, which is on either side. So on the right hand side, you have the DC in two illuminated USB 3 ports so that it's a bit easier to find them in the dark and stuff like that, as well as an SD card reader. And on the left hand side, you have Gigabit Ethernet, HDMI, mini display ports, another illuminated USB 3 ports, uh, Type C, and headphone and microphone jacks. So a lot of connectivity options here for you. Now, in terms of the user experience with the laptop, there are a few things I'd like to mention. Obviously, as I mentioned earlier, the CPU gets incredibly hot running at the high 90 degree Celsius range. And the GPU sits around about 80 degrees, which is kind of where I'd expect for this GPU. It's generally its temperature target, so don't worry too much about that. But I would mention that, that it does get incredibly hot, even on the top slightly, and it gets incredibly loud. So if you're going to be buying this laptop, make sure you have some headphones. Actually, gaming on the laptop was great fun. It was very responsive. Obviously, that 120 hertz display is very nice to play on. And overall, I'd be very happy to recommend it as a gaming laptop. I'd also be happy to recommend it as a product laptop as obviously it has a decent amount of storage and especially with that six core CPU you're now getting some great uh, performance in things like video editing and rendering so if you wanted to use this as a slightly kind of more mobile workstation rather than just gaming I think you'd be very pleased with it. Now is it worth the £2,000? Well it's kind of up to you there are a couple of uh, companies including people like PC Specialist and CyberPower who will offer very similar spec laptops for a few hundred pounds less of course so you do it does take a little bit longer to get to you and things like that but um, I would say that this is a little bit more of a refined experience if you like everything kind of works a little bit better together it's a pretty premium chassis as well which is obviously nice and uh, that 120 inch display is also pretty cool to see and not a lot of other vendors offer that so there's a few trade-offs and a few kind of premium features that might bump the price up a bit now, the laptop is upgradable you can throw in m.2 ssds extra or uh, you know kind of replace the ram and the hard drive drive as well and you can also in theory anyway service the cooling so if you fancy it you can dig under there but otherwise it is a pretty nice laptop would I put this on my desk Actually, probably. The the 17 inch model isn't normally my favorite, but the overall horsepower that you get from this and general user experience has actually been pretty good. So while I couldn't necessarily recommend this for an, uh, a kind of everyday travel laptop, for a one-off travel laptop that you know, you just want to take around with your, you know, have portability even in your home, for example. This is actually really nice. And overall, despite the price tag, I would probably still recommend it. If you want to pick up one of these laptops, take a look at the top link in the description down below. That will take you to your local Amazon store. You can check out pricing when and where you watch this. And if you want to support the channel, there are plenty of links in the description down below from Patreon to merch to Amazon and Overclock UK affiliate links. Plenty of stuff down there if you want to help me out. You can also hit that subscribe button if you're new to the channel i would love to hear your thoughts on the laptop in the comments down below or if you have any questions feel free to leave them down there too obviously if you're new to the channel hit that subscribe button and check out some of the other videos over here there's plenty of other laptop reviews and a whole load of other content you can check out in the cards and on the channel itself otherwise thank you for watching hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you all in the next video